EF5, the highest ranking a tornado can receive. With wind speeds of over 200 miles per hour, these killer twisters are unstoppable, tearing houses off their foundations with ease, driving paper through trees, scouring the ground up to 20 inches deep, and worst of all, killing hundreds. Luckily, there is hope if you have a tornado safe room above or underground. However, all across the internet, there have been discussions and even videos about tornadoes receiving an even higher ranking, EF6. But just how likely is a tornado that would be devastating enough to earn the impossible sixth rating? Let's find out. The Fujita Scale In 1971, Ted Fujita created a scale in which tornadoes could be ranked by damage and wind speed. However, it became outdated and the US adopted the EF Scale, which has 31 specific damage indicators. Despite what anyone tells you, there have actually been multiple. One was even given an official ranking. April 3rd, 1974, at 4.40 p.m., during the super outbreak of 74, a tornado with wind speeds of 260 miles per hour flattened the town in just nine minutes. Now, if you look this tornado up, you'll see that it was actually an F5. But if you dig deeper, you'll find that for a short time, it was actually rated as an F6. The only reason this tornado even received the sixth ranking, in my opinion, was because the Fujita scale was still in development. Gerald, Texas. On May 27, 1997, an extremely powerful F5 tornado tore through Gerald, Texas, leaving very little behind it. Some reported the tornado to have torn concrete out of its foundations. Others stated that steel beams were bent and mangled. This tornado had top wind speeds of an estimated 318 miles per hour. While its wind speeds don't qualify it to rate as an F6, its damage level most certainly does. Bridge Creek and more Oklahoma. The most famous of these tornadoes was the Bridge Creek Moore Tornado. It had the highest wind speeds recorded on Earth at 302 miles per hour, plus or minus 20 miles per hour wind gusts. That alone should have gotten it an F6 rating. While it's officially the most powerful, it didn't cause as much damage as the Gerald Tornado did, mainly because it moved much faster. El Reno, Oklahoma. The biggest of them all with a max width of 2.6 miles and wind speeds topping out at 302 miles per hour. However, some argue it had winds in excess of 336 miles per hour. Despite all this, it was only given an EF3 rating, mostly because it tracked over rural areas. No, there hasn't yet, but with global warming on the rise, anything's possible. Probably not much different from an EF5 with a minimum of 350 mile per hour winds, most likely, above ground safe rooms would probably no longer guarantee your survival, and it would probably have the power to lift foundations off the ground and carry them for a while. Although even with this kind of power, it still would be highly unlikely to receive an EF6 rating. It would be an unbelievable sight. Nowhere would be safe. Concrete would be shredded into pebbles. Steel would be ripped apart and reduced to bullet-sized projectiles. The ground would be scoured down to bedrock in some areas. Slabs would be ripped from the ground and thrown for miles. Houses would be atomized just by the orbital winds of the tornado. Not even well-reinforced concrete would protect you, even if you're underground. Hills would erode away. City skylines would be completely flattened, with some skyscrapers actually being picked up and carried a short distance. With wind speeds likely topping 500 miles per hour, this kind of power would guarantee a sixth rating being permanently added. Nothing could survive the awesome power of an EF6 tornado. What are the odds of this actually happening? I don't know, you do the math, I'm on break. But anyways, that's what it would take to guarantee a sixth rating being permanently added to the scales. Check out these two videos to see a real-time EF6 tornado simulation. Like and subscribe for more, and I'll see you on the next chase.